Hello, friends, and welcome to Symphony Storytime, where we share two of our favorite things, books and music. I'm Amy, and I'll be reading the story for you today, and I have with me one of my friends from the Oregon Symphony. Hello, my name is Alicia, and I play the flute, and I'm really excited to play for you today. This is what the flute looks like, and here is what it sounds like. It's so beautiful. Thank you, Amy. And I think it's the perfect sound for our book today. I think so, which too. Which is a very special one. It's called Owl Babies, and it's about three very worried little baby owls wondering where their mother is. It's one of my favorite books. Mine, too. Are you ready to start? I am. Okay. Owl Babies, written by Martin Waddell, illustrated by Patrick Benson, published by Candlewick Press. Once there were three baby owls, Sarah and Percy and Bill. They lived in a hole in the trunk of a tree with their owl mother. The hole had twigs and leaves and owl feathers in it. It was their house. One night they woke up and their owl mother was gone. Where's mommy? asked Sarah. Oh my goodness, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. The baby owls thought. All owls think a lot. I think she's gone hunting, said Sarah. To get us our food, said Percy. I want my Bobby, said Bill. But their owl mother didn't come. The baby owls came out of their house and they sat on the tree and waited. A big branch for Sarah, a small branch for Percy, and an old piece of ivy for Bill. She'll be back, said Sarah. Back soon, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. It was dark in the woods, and they had to be brave, for things moved all around them. She'll bring us mice and things that are nice, said Sarah. I suppose so, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. They sat and they thought. All owls think a lot. I think we should all sit on my branch, said Sarah. And they did, all three together. Suppose she got lost, said Sarah. Or a fox got her, said Percy. I want my mommy, said Bill. 
and the baby owls closed their owl eyes and wished their owl mother would come. And she came. Soft and silent, she swooped through the trees to Sarah and Percy and Bill. Mommy! They cried, and they flapped, and they danced, and they bounced up and down on their branch. What's all the fuss? Their owl mother asked. <coughs> you knew I'd come back. <coughs> the baby owls thought. All owls think a lot. <coughs> I knew it, said Sarah. <coughs> and I knew it, said Percy. <coughs> I love my mommy, said Bill. the sound of the flute really make you think of owls swooping through the sky? It sounded lovely. Will you tell us how you made those sounds that we heard in the story? I will. So I play the flute and you might think, oh, this must be one piece, one giant piece of metal that I carry around, maybe in like a sack or something. Nope. This is three parts. Check this out. This is called head joint. This middle part is called the body. And this is called the foot joint. So it's just like the parts of your body, the head joint, the body, and the foot joint. We put it together. One, two, three, and then presto, I have a whole flute. Can you rearrange it in any way you want? Well, it's funny you ask, because normally I play it like this. But one of the funny things we used to do when we first learned flute was that you can attach these two parts together and play a little silly song. There's only a couple keys down here, right? This one I have to kind of hold. It doesn't really quite stay. But listen to this. Well, first of all, just listen to the head joint. It sounds like this. You can do that. And then if I put just the foot joint on, it sounds like this. I love it. But this has never been <laughs> called for in any orchestral music, so I don't tend to do that. But <laughs> we usually put it together like this. And then what I do is I blow over this hole. It's the embouchure hole, and it's on the lip plate. So that's another part of the body on this flute. So I blow over as if you were blowing over you know, a water bottle to make a sound. I wonder if some of you guys have done that at home. It's the same thing here. And I change the sound by moving my fingers down the key. So I'll start at the top so you can see me play a high note. I'm kind of making the tube shorter over here. And I'll keep adding keys and make the tube longer, which makes a lower note. You might be able to see that I have all the keys closed on that note. So that means it's a super low note. The flute is part of the woodwind family, but it's not made of wood, but it used to be made of wood hundreds of years ago. In fact, some people still play on wooden flutes now, just for fun, they like the sound. 
This is made out of metal, however. My flute is made out of gold. I also have a silver flute. But there's some people who have titanium flutes and platinum flutes, and that's pretty amazing. I don't have one of those, but that's okay. And now we have some questions from some of you. Would you be willing to answer them? Absolutely. Okay, the first question is from Kayla. She's five and three quarters, and she wants to know when you first heard a flute, and did you love it? Kayla, that is an excellent question. I first heard a flute when I was very little because my mom played the flute, and she didn't do it as a career like I did, but she had one in the house, and when I was in fourth grade, it was time to choose an instrument at school. And my mom said, guess what? We have a flute already. So I chose the flute, and it turns out I loved it. I loved it instantly, and I still love it today, and I hope you loved hearing the flute today. That must have been really exciting. It was. Yeah, I bet. Okay, second question is from Robin, who's six and a half, and wants to know how much you have to practice. Robin, also an excellent question. You just have to practice a little every day. Now, I'm in an orchestra, which means I probably practice a lot every day, especially with big concerts coming up. You know, I'll practice, you know, an hour or two a day. But if you're starting an instrument, like my daughter Sylvie is starting the guitar right now during quarantine, you just need to practice a little bit every day. So she'll practice maybe five minutes one day or 10 minutes the next day. And sometimes she's really excited and she plays for half an hour. And if you do it every day, that's what makes the difference. It's much better doing it a little bit every day than 30 minutes once a month. So that's my advice to you if you're gonna start something right now. And that never stops. You it, still practice. Yeah, it never stops. I practice, I probably should <laughs> practice more. I practice almost every day. <laughs> All right, last question. Rex is seven and wants to know what you play for your own children. Oh, Rex, that's a great question. Well, my daughter Sylvie is seven and my son Harry is four and a half and they both love music and sometimes we all play together too, like piano and drums and guitar and flute. And uh, my son's favorite song right now is On Top of Spaghetti which he calls Lost My Poor Meatball. I remember that. I remember that one from you when like, I was you a like little girl. Song? Yes, I love that song. We all love that song. So I would love to play it for you guys on flute. So before we listen to Alicia play, I'm going to say goodbye to you. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us, and I hope you'll watch another Symphony Story Time again soon. <laughs>